What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Um, first up, I owe you an apology. <laughs> the last video did end a little bit abruptly. And that's because the battery on that thing went flat. So there was no little farewell at the end. Um, and to be fair, I haven't even started the carbs yet, so that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> These are the carbs off the ZZR. So basically it all needs to be stripped cleaned up and serviced and put back together again. Let me show you what we got. Right then, for an awful lot of this, you're gonna be perched up there. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> the carbs is pretty manky, as you can see. Um, they don't look the best, but then, then again, it's like, you know, the bike's 32 years old. It's done nothing in 21 years. It's just been sat there. Jamie did pull it all apart about a year ago. These have just been a box in the corner of his garage. And that's where they've sat. So. Just first impressions, is just covered in muck, basically. We do have a screw missing there, which I'll probably be able to find another one for, so that's all good. Um, the butterflies, the, the sort of, they're a bit notchy opening, but that's because there's loads of crud and stuff on the inside here. You know, it's like, all, it's just mucky, basically. But they do operate nice and smoothly. All the springs and everything else is there. They don't look too shabby. Um, we've got a little bit of rust on um, a couple of clips up here. But the rest of it is just muck and goo. All the pipes and you know everything else don't seem too bad. Not by a long shot. All the clips is all good. None's broken off, and you can like squeeze all of them. So you know we're in pretty good shape. So what I want to do is to strip it down, shove it through the ultrasonic, get it clean, and then just put it back together and service it basically. So we are going to be splitting the bank. Um, and it's just going to be a case of strip and service it in the way we go. So, this is just the idle adjuster. He should come off. There's a spring under there as well. He's just itching to come off, isn't he? Right, put him there. Um, I suppose we might as well go to town on pipes and stuff, eh? Hey? These little impact drivers are dead good. It's a Ryobi one, so a bit like the impact gun, um, but it just knocks things out. So these are quite stiff. I tried tapping it with a hammer and you know everything else, but they just whiz it out, no problems. So all this lot can come off. Thank you. 
one isn't there <laughs> it's like it's the law trouble is with these little tea pieces it's like a metal bit that goes into a plastic bit uh, it's just i'm really worried about yanking on it really hard um what have i got um i haven't got a proper set of pliers which i need to get Right, you might be staying in until you go in the ultrasonic. <laughs> All right, what else have we got? So we've got more tea pieces there. They should just pop out when I separate it. And that will come out when I separate it as well, which is fine. So we're basically set to split the bank, I think. Um, So there's nothing else connecting them apart from that bolt and that fuel rail. Right, okay. Let's do that then. Come on, don't be a turd. Oh, you're stuck in there. Right, um, 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 um. Cobalt. Right, that's better. I really didn't want to break that one. <laughs> So he comes off. That should slide all the way out. And then the bank should separate. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, it should separate. So there's the first one. Right, I'm leaving all this lot together just because I want to do one carb at a time. But essentially all these pop apart and then, yeah, obviously join back up again with the retaining springs, blah, 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 blah. Um, but the thing is, if I, if I dismantle all of them, I'm just going to lose stuff, which you don't really want to do. So in with all these springs and everything else can go over there for now. And we'll just work on this one. So you take these springs out, just so we don't lose them. And that's it. See what I mean about, in there you get this line of crud. That's what the butterfly is kind of gripping on when you just go to open it. And all this lot should just come off. But if that's all cruddy there, then, you know, Things is not going to be grand on the inside, so it all needs sorting out. Basically, right, let's be brief.
all in there. What are we? 35 degrees. Uh, no, other way. Give it eight minutes. See where we are after that. If it needs more, it needs more. Got a bit of an assembly line going on. Whilst one lot is going through this, getting cleaned up, I'll strip down the next one, ready to stick it in. Put this in for about eight minutes. Um, you know, you can pull one of them apart and have it all, you know, good and ready to go in sort of five. There really ain't that much to them. Um, that just means I can give it a bit of a scrub and you know get it all nice and that. Um, still couldn't get that out. It is proper jammed in there. There is an O-ring, or there is going to be an O-ring in there. I don't know what sort of state it is. In, but all the O-rings on those little fuel connectors, you know, where the rail goes from one carb to the next and all that, the O-rings is shot. So I do need to try and get this out. Um, just because I want to, you know, replace it, basically. <laughs> Go through all this and then just have the fuel rate leaking. No, I mean, that would just be stupid, wouldn't it? So hopefully... The warmth of the bath has sort of helped it along a little bit. Um, mind your ears. Look at that. That ain't come up too shabby, is it? It's all lovely and clean. That'll do. That'll do, donkey. Oh, there's a little bit of smell on there. Let's get him off. There we go. Cool, so all I'm doing is giving them a squirt of GT85, um, just because they're going to be sat in pieces for the rest of the day until I'm in again tomorrow. It ain't going to hurt, is it? And I can sit over here ready for the next load. That'll do. Right, let's pull this lot out. Don't need me nut anymore. <laughs> a couple of these little brackets and stuff where the cables run, they are, you know, a little bit tarnished and stuff. Um, he might be going on a scotch bright wheel just to get cleaned up. Um, but the rest of it is coming up really, really nice. Mm. That's another cup of coffee gone to waste because I need to chip off. So I've just got the one left. Um, so I'll be back in again tomorrow. We can shove him through the cleaner and get him all spritzed up and nice looking along with all these bits and bobs and stuff. 
And then uh, I do have a little bit of running about to do tomorrow. I've got to pick up some uh, fixings and stuff for the clutch cover and blah, 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 blah. So, you know, a little bit to do tomorrow. So I'm probably not getting fully assembled tomorrow, but we'll just have to see all this lot has got to go through as well. But anyway, that's it. I'll be back. Did I cock it up? I did. <laughs> the last friction plate is supposed to have its tangs in the little slots, not the big ones. <laughs> Arse. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> oh yeah, there's been quite a few people tipped in about this um, starter chain tensioner jobby thing here and why it was taking chunks out of, out of the edges of my pressure plate. Um, apparently it is quite a, um, a known thing. Um, apparently it's most noticeable if you, um, like if you stall it and then just pull the clutch in without going into neutral and start it up again, that's when bad things start happening. And essentially it keeps on snagging um, and it works these bolts loose. Um, and eventually all sorts of nasty things happen because they fall off and go where they're not supposed to and you can just imagine. Um, I did find a video, there was a French fella. I can't remember your name, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. But he sent me a link to a video of this thing just being turned over, not being started or anything. You see how much this thing wobbles about? It's ridiculous. Are you the right one? Yes. Um, so, oh, hang on. Where is he? But yeah, I'll stick the video up just so you can see. Um, and then he did, he, did mod he did do a modification, but there's this company in the States that do something called a tension tamer, something like that. Something like that, anyway. Um, so I think I'm looking into that one. I'm probably going to end up getting one, just because why wouldn't you? Is my battery dying? Oh no, I've just got it on low. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, so I'm going to look into that. I'm probably going to end up getting one, just because why wouldn't you? And after seeing that video of this chain slopping about like anything, I think it's going to be a good thing. Right, that's another job ticked off the list. <laughs> and for the first time in ages, I've finished work and I've got clean hands, look. It's because they've been in degreaser in an ultrasonic all day. <laughs> um, all the carbs is stripped and cleaned. Um, I've blown literally every passageway and God knows what else out, and they're all bone dry, and then I've just coated them with GT85. Uh, where is it, this stuff? It's just like a maintenance spray, basically. Um, but it displaces water and that, and it just gives it a coating or something, because they're all good, just going to have to sit on the bench for now. Um, I was hoping to get them all reassembled this week. I ain't going to get a chance to, because it is Friday and it is now, what, 20 past 11? I need to chip off. I've got a little bit of running about to do. But, you know, it's another job ticked off the list, eh? So, um, will I get to it tomorrow? Probably not. Um, Jamie's in tomorrow, and we're going to try and get all the heads sorted and do the valve gaps and time it and blah, 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 blah. Loads of stuff. So if they end up sitting there for a day and I'll do it next week, I don't really care. It's got some of that goo on it. You know, nothing's going to happen to it. All the diaphragms are really nice and that as well. There's no splits or cracks. All the hoses is fine. A um, couple of the clips have got like a little, you know, the coating's gone in a couple of places, but I'm not particularly fussed. That'll do absolutely fine for what we're up to. So, Jamie's in tomorrow and we're cracking on with the head. Um, everything's ready. It's all kind of over there. So hopefully we can just have at it. Um, I'm probably gonna need to swap some shims out and stuff. But the local bike shop I have been speaking to and they've got, um, they've got a stack of workshop shims that they use. So basically I think they do like an exchange thing. 
So we've got to measure it all up and check gaps and blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to find there's a few that have to be switched around and a few that have to be swapped out. So, you know, hopefully we'll get to that point early in the day and that well, go down and get them before they shut. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? And then pretty much all the top's done. Get the cars back together, we can stick that on, exhaust can go on, you know, radiator, oil cooler, all that other junk. And we're getting there. It's getting closer and it's picking up the pace as well, which is great. But anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it for this one. Do hope you're well and staying safe. We'll see you on the next one. Laters! Yes. <laughs>